Hello and welcome to Shabbat News for January 9th, 2023. My name is Andrea and today we'll be covering the wrongful death of Tyree Nichols, the reopening of the Oakland Zoo, the current state of gun violence in our nation, as well as the latest in sports and entertainment news. All that and more coming up on Shabbat News. Keep an eye out for an unusual light in the sky. A recently discovered green comet is set to soon pass Earth for the first time in 50,000 years. Astronomers first discovered the icy celestial object last March. They think that the last time the comet was visible in the night sky was during the Stone Age. Its orbit passes through the outer reaches of the solar system, which is why it's taken such a long time to swing by our planet again. The comet will make its closest path to Earth between Wednesday and Thursday. It will appear as a faint green smudge near the North Star, and don't worry about the comet coming too close to Earth. It will be at least 26 million miles away. That's more than 100 times as further than the Moon. The city of Memphis announced a suspension of two police officers in a connection with the death of Tyree Nichols. That's on top of the five officers who were fired and charged with murder. Also, two emergency medical technicians and a fire department lieutenant have been fired over their response to Nichols' encounter with members of the police Scorpion unit. CNN's Shimon Prokopes takes a closer look at the now disbanded unit and the history of others like it across the country. There is a reckoning coming uh, for the police department and for the leadership. Launched with fanfare in 2021, the Memphis Police Department's now-defunct Scorpion Unit was among the first major initiatives by new Memphis Police Chief C.J. Davis, only a few months on the job. Too many families, too many mothers, too many fathers have suffered in our city, and quite frankly, I think we are all tired of it. Faced with rising murder rates and a spike in violent thefts, the street crimes operation to restore peace in our neighborhoods was her response. 40 officers who would patrol high crime areas, often in plain clothes, with a mandate to deliver arrests. The Scorpion unit has had a total of 566 arrests, 390 of them for felonies. They have seized $103,000 in cash, 270 vehicles, and 253 weapons. Now, after five members of the unit were caught on video and charged with murder in the violent beating of Tyree Nichols, it's been disbanded. Specialized units have existed in most of America's 70 major cities, often driving police arrest stats and generating PR opportunities for politicians eager to appear tough on crime. I'm glad to hear that the unit's been disbanded. I think we should probably be taking a serious look at these specialized units, um, both in Memphis and around the country. This kind of so-called elite police squad is not a new idea. So some cities are taking on drug dealers with urban commando teams with intimidating names, like Crash, Dart, TNT, and in Atlanta, Red Dog. Show me hands, get on your knees. Atlanta's Red Dog unit started in the 1980s. Officers went on high-risk raids and patrolled public housing. It was politically popular, but was disbanded in 2011 after years of complaints over its tactics. In 2021, facing a new spike in crime, Atlanta PD launched its latest specialized Titan unit. We believe that the direction that they will have to be more aggressive, aggressive as it relates to which street violence uh, that we are up against, but it is no way uh, to replace what Red Dog was. In New York, the NYPD's street crime unit was launched in the 1970s with the motto, We Own the Night. The unit faced controversy in 1999 after four plainclothes officers fired 41 shots at Amadou Diallo, an unarmed 23-year-old student outside his apartment building in the Bronx, claiming he fit the description of a man wanted for rape. The officers who shot Diallo were found not guilty. The unit was disbanded in 2002 after a federal investigation uncovered racial profiling. In 2020, the NYPD disbanded all of its plainclothes anti-crime units, the kind responsible for the chokehold death of Eric Garner. New York City Mayor and former police officer Eric Adams told CNN on Monday, specialized units aren't inherently bad. Units don't create abuse. 
abusive behavior creates abuse. Nearly 25 years later, Amadou Diallo's mother is still fighting to change police practices. I have to hold my heart and I have to uh, let them know that this is a club that we wish we'd never had to welcome them. And this is a club that no families want to be part of. From Philadelphia to Baltimore and Indianapolis, Memphis is the latest example of an all-too-common cycle. Crime rises, police create an aggressive unit that delivers an increase in arrests. Then comes scandal or tragedy. Thanks, Shimon. This is truly a tragedy that our nation is facing. In a related local news story, a pizza restaurant worker was fired after several hungry San Francisco police department officers were denied service and told that they were not welcomed. The pizza incident happened when the emotions were high across the nation from the police beating video released by Memphis, Tennessee officials. Hundreds of the merchants, marchers, were outraged by Tyree Nichols' death in Memphis, took to the streets of San Francisco and Oakland voicing concerns over police brutality. On Sunday, January 29th, SFPD officers were ordering pizza from one of their favorite restaurants, Pizza Squared, when one employee told the officers they were not welcomed in the restaurant. Pizza Squared's motto is Hello Good Pizza and serves Detroit and Sicilian style pizza. The restaurant's owner quickly responded, responded by apologizing to the officers. The employee who denied pizza for police officers, a trainee on his third day of work, was swiftly fired. If you would like to see some lions, tigers, and bears, then you are in luck because the Oakland Zoo has finally reopened its gates. The zoo had been closed for more than a month after storm-related damage forced it to shut down. The zoo closed on New Year's Day when rain washed away part of the road and created a huge sinkhole at the entrance. Since then, repair crews for the city and the zoo had been hard at work and now say that the work is almost done. Originally, the zoo hoped to reopen by January 17th, but was delayed until Friday, February 3rd, due to safety concerns. During the closure, zookeepers also repaired other problems caused by the storms, like flooding and soil erosion. Now we turn to Jonathan for the sports news. Jonathan, what have you got us, got us for us this week? Well, Andrea, hold on to your hat, because the Super Bowl is coming up this Sunday. Planning to host? Keep in mind, Game day snacks are genuinely more expensive since food prices are almost up 12% from last year. Here are a couple of party food options that haven't been affected by inflation. For instance, chicken wings. They actually cost 20% less than last year due to a better supply. In January 2022, a pound of wings was about $3.38, but this year the price is $2.65. Another affordable option right now is guacamole because avocado prices are down 20% from last year. You might want to consider telling your guests to BYOB because beer prices are up more than 10%. The Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles will face off in the Super Bowl on February 12th at the State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Hope your appetizer trays are filled and ready for festivities. In other sports news, fans are excited as things get busy on the court following the Kings versus Timberwolves game. The Kings left the Timberwolves howling as they secured the crown with a score of 118 to 111. The Kings scored 21 points off Timberwolves turnovers while the home team struggled from the free throw line, making just 13 of 25. Minnesota's Anthony Edwards only had 33 points on 27 shots, while the Kings often made him look more uncomfortable than the game prior. Fans watching the highlights are raving in the comments about how De'Aaron Fox came in clutch and some going as far to say he should be an all-star reserve. But who am I to speculate? The win pushes the Kings record to 28 out of 21, two and a half games ahead of the Los Angeles Clippers for the number three seed in the Western Conference. They spent the night in Minneapolis Monday and plan to fly to San Antonio on Tuesday. They are scheduled to practice Tuesday afternoon in preparation for Wednesday's game against the Spurs. That's all for this week's sports news. I'm Jonathan Piper II, and now back to you, Andrea. 
Thanks, Jonathan. A reminder that the Super Bowl kickoff time is set for, the sun for this Sunday, February 12th at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Make sure to tune in this set Sunday to see how your favorite team fares. Now let's get some national news. The U.S. spends more on health care than any other high-income countries, but it still performs worse on many measures of health. That's according to a new report from the independent research group, the Commonwealth Fund. The group analyzed health statistics from 38 high-income countries. It found that the U.S. has the lowest life expectancy at birth, the highest rate of people with multiple chronic diseases, the highest rates of death of from avoidable or treatable causes, and the highest maternal and infant death rates. The U.S. Do, did do well in cancer prevention and early cancer treatment. Still, the Commonwealth Fund says American's health system is not working as well as it could be. The group urges Congress to expand access to health care and to invest in health equity and social services. The U.S. is the only country among those studies that doesn't have universal health coverage. Affordability remains the top of the reason why some Americans do not sign up for health coverage. And half of the working age adults skip or delay getting needed care due to high out-of-pocket costs. Parents might want to consider limiting baby screen times so that they are more likely to perform better in school when they're older. According to a new study, letting infants watch tablets and TV may impact their academic achievement and emotional well-being later on. The study found that the increased use of screen time during infancy was associated with poorer executive function by the age of nine. Executive function is key in being able to plan, focus, pay attention, remember instructions, and multitask. It's also important for emotional regulation, learning academic achievement, and mental health. The study was published Monday in the journal JAMA Pediatrics. More research is needed to determine if screen time caused the executive function impairments or if the factors were responsible. Gun violence is on, on the rise in 2023 as evidenced by the next two stories. First up, one person is dead and two are injured after a shooting during a church service near St. Louis, Missouri Sunday. Police say two men who knew each other opened fire here at Pilgrim Green Missionary Baptist Church on the Illinois side of the state line. They were inside the cafeteria at the time. East St. Louis police say a bystander and both shooters were wounded during the exchange. They say one of the shooters later died. And sadly, gun violence continues to find its way in our schools as students return to class at Richneck Elementary. Nearly a month after a six-year-old student allegedly shot his teacher inside a classroom, children faced new safety protocols as their parents dropped them off at the school in Newport, Virginia. Police were on campus to assist with the transition. Kids were required to arrive without a backpack because the school planned to provide them with clear ones. Families were told that if students bring lunch to school, they would be a run through a metal detector and subject to a search. Two metal detectors were installed on campus. Parents aren't allowed in classrooms, and if they do enter the school building, they must show up ID and are subject to a search. First grade teacher Abby Suriner was released from the hospital after being shot and critically injured on January 6. Meanwhile, the president of the local teachers unit says the shooting was not the first violent incident involving the six-year-old boy. The union leader says he was told the boy had previously tried to choke his kindergarten teacher last year. The six-year-old family attorney had no comment on the choking allegation. Now let's line, lighten things up a bit with Ariana covering this week's entertainment news. Thank you, Andrea. New movies heading to theaters in February include an apocalyptic thriller, the 25th anniversary of a box office juggernaut, in the latest Marvel movie, Rick Miguela reports. Mr. You've been chosen to make this decision. Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you to prevent the apocalypse. Dave Bautista stars in Knock at the Cabin. The latest thriller from M. Night Shyamalan is based on the novel The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. The unwelcome visitors arrive in theaters Friday. Listen to me, I've got you. I won't let go. 
James Cameron's Avatar The Way of Water will still be in theaters when Titanic sails back onto movie screens in celebration of the film's 25th anniversary. Guests can embark aboard Titanic once again February 10th. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. What's that? Time. Ant-Man and the Wasp face off against the villainous Kang the Conqueror in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's latest big screen adventure. Fans can journey back to the quantum realm when Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania opens February 17th. No, 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 don't eat that, don't eat that. Let's see what kind of effect that has on us. Based very loosely on a true story, Cocaine Bear follows what happens when a bear ingests large amounts of the illicit substance. The action comedy was directed by Elizabeth Banks and features one of Ray Liotta's final performances. Getting refills of popcorn in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Remember to grab your popcorn and order your tickets soon to watch these movies. The actress Lisa Loring, best known for playing the original Wednesday in the Addams Family series, has died at the age of 64. She had a stroke last week. Her family removed life support on Saturday. Loring was just six years old when she portrayed the iconic dead-obsessed Picta Waring Wednesday in the Addams Family sitcom. The show only lasted two years, but in 1977, Loring reprised her role as Wednesday Senior in the television film Halloween with the New Addams Family. Her other acting credits include The Prudes of Southampton, As the World Turns, The Girl from Uncle, Fantasy Island, and Barnaby Jones. How terrible it is to lose a legend like Lisa Loring, but she will always remain in our hearts as the original Wednesday Adams. That's it for this week's news, entertainment news. I'm Mariana Paricio, now back to you, Andrea. Thank you, Ariana, for that wonderful report. Any day is a good day to snuggle up with a cup of hot chocolate. That's because National Hot Chocolate Day was January 31st. Make some at home or stop by a coffee shop for one. Feel free to top it off with whipped cream or marshmallows. You can celebrate by taking a photo and posting it with the hashtag National Hot Chocolate Day. And our final story ends on a happy note. A Missouri family has been reunited with this dog after he disappeared more than five years ago. Reporter Alan Shopee has the story. Little buddy, do you remember me? It's tough to explain how this pup made it to Kansas City from its home more than four hours southwest. Oh my gosh, it's been so long, buddy. Oh. Little buddy disappeared from its home more than five and a half years ago. We must not have secured the doggy door good enough. His home about 40 miles outside of Springfield. Putting up posters, driving around, checking with everybody, and nobody'd seen him. Brian says little buddy was adopted from a rescue in 2017. They had him microchipped, but when he went missing, no one turned him in. Raytown Animal Control found him wandering this week. He looks as though he's been well cared for. Your new collar has a GPS tag on in the house. Midwest Animal Rescue says this story is a great reminder as to why everyone needs to get their little best friend microchipped. They say you never know when they might get lost and this is just proof they can be found. How he got up this far is beyond us. To be able to have a great happy ending like this is, just makes all the difference in the world. Just never would have expected after this many years that that microchip would lead to, to little buddy coming home. It's so good to see you. You're so much older than you you were when we had you. In Raytown, Alan Chilp, KMBC 9 News. Thank you, Alan, for such a nice, unexpected story of a family reuniting after so long. At times when so much of the news seems to be saturated in sorrow, it's nice to see a little ray of sunshine poke through every once in a while. That's all for Shabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff at the Mass Communications Department here at Shibbo College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash TV. Stay tuned to KCTH channel 27 for more Shibbo TV.